now i am going to discuss on a new topic and that is on biped walking now before i start let me define what do you mean by this biped robot now this biped robot is actually a simpler simpler version of this particular the humanoid robot so humanoid robot is very much complicated and this biped robot is actually the a simple version of that particular the humanoid robot now a biped robot should be able to walk on the plane surface it should be able to negotiate the staircases take turn cross ditches as the situation demands now while walking so this particular biped robot should be able to maintain its balance and that balance is nothing but the dynamic balance now i am just going to discuss in details like how can it maintain the dynamic balance so here i am just going to discuss the walking cycle of a biped robot now if you see if you concentrate on this particular the, the this figure we can see that so this l f and r f are nothing but the left foot and the right foot and these two foot are the ground foot now let me assume that so this particular the rectangular box indicates actually it is the your the ground so both the feet are placed on the ground and this is nothing but a double support phase now after this double support phase what happens the right foot will remains at the same position and the left foot that will be taken away from the ground and now it is on air so here in this particular configuration for example this particular configuration that is the single support phase configuration the right foot is on the the ground and the left foot is in air and this is a single support phase now after that so there will be another double support phase now here so this particular right foot that is already there on the ground and the left foot that will be placed on the ground so here both the feet are on the ground and this is nothing but the configuration of the double support phase and after that so this particular the left foot will be on the ground and the right foot will be put in air and this is once again a single support phase now starting from this particular double support phase then there will be one single support phase then double support phase and single support phase that completes actually one walking cycle so one walking cycle consists of two single support phases and there will be two such double support phases now while walking this particular biped robot should be able to maintain the dynamic balance during its single support phase as well as the double support phases now here i'm just going to discuss how to maintain that particular your the dynamic balance now before that let me define like what do you mean by get the term get is very frequently used in biped walking now by get we mean it is the sequence of legs movement uh, uh, in in coordination of the body movement which is required for walking of that particular the biped robot now while while walking so this particular biped robot should be able to uh, consume the minimum amount of power but at the same time it should have the maximum dynamic balance margin so i'm just going to discuss in brief how to determine so this particular the power consumption during walking and how to maintain this particular the dynamic balance now here actually what i'm going to do i'm just going to discuss in brief just to make it simple but the 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 exact derivation or the detailed derivation if you want to have a look so you'll have to concentrate on the textbook that is the fundamentals of robotics uh, written by me so there all such things are dealt in much more detail but here as i told for simplicity i'm just going to discuss in brief like how to determine the power rating for this particular biped robot and how to determine the the balance margin 
Now, here uh, I am just going to concentrate first on this single support phase. So, and here for simplicity, I am just going to concentrate on a particular task that is nothing but the ascending of staircase. So, I am just going to discuss staircase ascending and that too for the single support phase. So, let us see what happens during the single support phase and whenever this particular biped robot is going to negotiate or going to ascend through the, the staircase. Now, here on this particular figure the staircase, so that is denoted by this. So, these are nothing but the steps of the staircases. So, these are nothing but the staircases. Now, here so this S w that particular symbol indicates the width of the staircase and S h is nothing but the height of this particular the staircase. And here so this is the single support page. So, only one foot will be on uh, the ground and the other foot will be on the, the air. Now, here out of these two foot, so this particular feet foot is on the ground and this particular foot is in air because this is a single support phase and this indicates actually the trajectory of this particular the swing foot that is the foot which is in the air. So, during this particular walking through the staircase, so this is the the the, the locus of the the, the 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 swing foot. So, this is nothing but the swing foot trajectory. Now, this particular swing foot trajectory I am just going to represent with the help of some mathematical expression and we will derive that particular the mathematical expression. Now, before that let me tell you that this indicates say one foot this is another foot, this is one link, this is another link, another link, another link, another link and this is the foot. So, let me write here. So, the length of this particular the foot is denoted by say L 1 and its mass is denoted by M 1. Similarly, for this particular link supposing that the length is your L 2 and the mass is M 2 and this particular mass is concentrated at this particular the point. Similarly, for this particular link the link length is L 3 and the mass is M 3 and may M 3 is concentrated here at this particular the point. Similarly, for this particular the length is L 4 and the mass is M 4. Now, here the length is M 5 and mass is M 5 this here the length is L 6 and the mass is your M 6 and for this particular foot the length is L 7 and mass is nothing but M 7. Okay. So, here there are 7 links. So, L 1, L 2, L 3, L 4, L 5, L 6 and L 7 and here I am just going to consider for simplicity only 7 degrees of freedom. So, here I am going to consider a biped robot having 7 degrees of freedom and the joint angles. So, all the joints are actually the rotary joints and the joint angles are denoted by say say theta 1 here theta 1 is equals to 0. Then comes here we have got theta 2 the second joint angle. So, this is also theta 2 then comes your theta 3. So, this is also theta 3 and the joint angle theta 4. Similarly, the joint angle theta 5 then comes theta 6 and theta 7 and for simplicity we have assumed that theta 1 is equals to 0 and theta 7 is equals to 0. And this particular joint is actually the hip joint and here we consider that this joint that particular joint and this particular joint all three joints are coinciding. So, this is actually the ankle joint this is the knee joint and this is the hip joint. Similarly, on the other other leg, so this is nothing but the knee joint and this is the, the ankle joint. Now, here let us see how to determine the power consumption like if this particular robot is planning to uh, negotiate the staircase in this particular the direction. And here for simplicity we are going to consider 
the movement only along the, the sagittal plane. That means, the sidewise movement we are not going to consider for simplicity. Now, let us see how to carry out this particular the analysis, but as I told that I am not going to discuss in details the mathematical derivation which is available in the, the textbook of this particular the course. Now, here the step length that is denoted by L is nothing but 2 s w plus x 3 minus x 1. So, here actually the step length. So, this is nothing but. So, the distance between this particular point and this particular point. So, this is actually the step length that is L and this L is nothing but 2 s w minus x 1 minus x 1 plus x 3. So, this is your x 3. So, x 3 plus s w plus s w okay, minus this particular x 1 that is from here to here. So, from here to here. So, this is nothing but is your the step length that is nothing but L. Similarly, the height of this particular heap that is denoted by h is nothing but L 2 cos theta 2 plus L 3 cos theta 3. Now, this is your L 2 the length of this particular the link this angle is theta 2. So, your L 2 cos theta 2 is nothing but this. So, from here so this will be your L 2 cos theta 2. Similarly, this is your L 3 and this particular angle is nothing but theta 3. So, from here to here is nothing but is your L 3 cos theta 3. So, L 2 cos theta 2 plus L 3 cos theta t is nothing but the height of this particular the hip. So, these two terms actually will have to define for the purpose of analysis. And here another thing so, this is the hip joint. Now, during this particular the, 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 the walking through the staircase. So, this the, the hip should also follow a particular trajectory. Now, here for simplicity we have assumed that the hip is going to follow a straight path and the slope of this particular straight line is nothing but the slope of this particular the staircase. So, if I just try to find out the slope of the staircase and the slope of this particular the hip. So, they are having the same slope. Now, this is the way actually mathematically we are going to describe. So, this particular the configuration for the purpose of analysis. Now, here as I told that this particular swing foot should have some trajectory. Now, for simplicity we have considered that the swing foot is going to follow one cubic polynomial of this particular form that is z is nothing but c naught plus c 1 x plus c 2 x square plus c 3 x q. Now, here actually for this cubic polynomial there are four unknowns like c naught c 1 c 2 and c 3. Now, if I want to solve it I will have to take the help of four such known conditions and these are nothing but the boundary conditions. Now, before I discuss that let me once again go back. Now, this is nothing but is actually your the hip trajectory. So, which I am going to represent mathematically. Now, here so this is the, the coordinate system this is your x and this is z. So, at this particular point the z height is actually is equal to 0. Similarly, when x is, is, uh, is this at that particular situation. So, I can find out that this is nothing but the height along this particular z and then we try to find out for a particular value of x when x is here. So, I, I can find out this much is actually your z when x is this much that means here. So, this is nothing but the value of this particular the z. So, using these four conditions. So, I can derive this particular the cubic polynomial. So, I am just going to write down. So, all such uh, condition here. So, the conditions are written here. So, this boundary condition the four boundary conditions are written here. For example, at x equals to 0, z is equals to 0 and so on. And if you use this boundary condition, we can find out what should be the values for this c 1, c 0, c 1, c 2 and c 3. 
and once you have got the values of the coefficient, so I can represent this swing foot trajectory. Now, this once you have got this particular the swing foot trajectory, next we try to find out the hip joint trajectory. And I have already mentioned that we have assumed that, that this particular hip joint is going to follow a straight path and whose slope is nothing but equal to the slope of this particular the staircase. So, this particular angle and that particular angle, so they are the same. Now, here actually there is a chance of optimization, we can find out a suitable and optimal slope or optimal your the trajectory for this particular the hip joint, but here for simplicity we consider that the slope of this particular the trajectory is same as the slope of the, the staircase. Now, if I concentrate on this particular hip joint, so I can find out. So, if I take the projection of this particular hip joint, so I can find out the distance between this ankle joint and the projection of the hip joint. Similarly, I can find out the distance between the projected point from the hip and the distance of this particular the ankle joint and that is denoted by L 2. And I can also find out what is H 1 that is the height of this particular the hip joint and I can also find out what is H 2 that is nothing but the height of this particular the hip joint. Now, knowing this particular, so what you can do is uh, we can carry out the analysis for this your the dynamic balance and we can also find out the expression for the power consumption. Now, here uh, I am just going to discuss little bit how to maintain the dynamic balance for this particular the biped robot. Now, before I proceed further, uh, I just want to mention that uh, we human being, we are not statically stable, we are dynamically stable. Even if we are standing at a particular location, we are not statically stable, but we are dynamically stable. Now, let us see how to maintain that this particular the dynamic balance. Now, here I am just going to use the concept of the ZMP and that is known as the zero moment point. So, ZMP is the zero moment point that is zero moment point and the concept of ZMP was introduced by uh, Bhuko Bratovic. and this particular concept has become very popular. Now, let us try to understand how can you find out this particular ZMP or the zero moment point. Now, to find out this particular zero moment point actually what I am going to do is, so I am just going to uh, consider say a particular the link for the robot and for this particular biped robot say I am just going to consider say a particular the leg. Supposing that, so that particular leg is denoted by this. So, this is nothing but a link or a leg okay. and this particular link or the leg is having one concentrated mass and this particular mass is denoted by this. And supposing that for this ith leg or the ith link, the mass is denoted by m i and this mass center is having the coordinate that is nothing but x i y i z i. Okay. Now, let us see how to determine the your the ZMP that is the zero moment point. Now, here so this is nothing but the foot which is in touch with the ground. So, this is nothing but the foot and this foot is having the length and this length is denoted by L 7 and this is nothing but the center of this particular the foot that means that is at the mid point. So, this is this particular the length is nothing but L 7 by 2. So, this is the midpoint. Okay. Now, let us see how to derive and how to determine your this ZMP. So, before I define actually uh, let me let me tell what do you mean by this particular the ZMP. Now, ZMP is actually a zero moment point which is a hypothetical point and this is a point about which 
the sum of all the moments becomes equal to 0. Now, let me repeat. So, Z m p is a hypothetical point. Now, this is a point about which the sum of all the moments becomes equal to 0. Now, here, so this particular mass m i, so this is subjected to a few forces. For example, say, so g is the acceleration due to gravity. So, this particular m i g is acting vertically downward. So, this is the direction uh, along which this m i g is acting vertically downward. Now, here if I consider the movement of this particular mass along the x direction and the movement of this particular mass along the z direction and if I say that along the x direction there is one acceleration that is nothing but x i double dot and along this particular z direction there is one acceleration that is nothing but z i double dot. Then we can say that there is a force acting along the x direction that is your m i x i double dot mass into acceleration is the force. Similarly, here along this particular z direction, so m i z i double dot, so that particular force is acting. And moreover, so here, so this is a rotary movement, the link is a rotating. So, here we will have to consider the moment of inertia and this i i is nothing but the moment of inertia of the ith link or the ith leg and this your omega i dot that is nothing but the angular acceleration. So, your the moment of inertia multiplied by angular acceleration is nothing but is actually a torque. For example, say force multiplied by linear acceleration sorry mass multiplied by linear acceleration is force. Similarly, the moment of inertia multiplied by the angular acceleration is nothing but is actually the torque. So, here so, this is subjected to the torque that is i i omega i dot and then it is subjected to the force like m i g then comes m i x i double dot then m i z i double dot. Now, here I'm on this particular the ground foot. So, I am just going to consider a hypothetical point supposing that the point is here. Now, corresponding to this particular point, let us try to find out what should be the, the moment and we, we just uh, put the sum of those particular moments equal to 0. Now, here the vertically downward force is nothing but m i g and vertically upward is m i z i double dot and truly speaking. So, this m i z i double dot is more larger compared to this particular m i g because this is moving vertically upward direction. So, what is the difference between these two forces the resultant force is nothing but m i z i double dot minus m i g. So, this is nothing but the resultant force in this particular the direction. Now, I will have to find out the moment. So, the force is acting the resultant force is acting in this particular direction and how much is the moment. So, with respect to this particular moment, so I will have to find out I will have to multiply it by this particular the distance and what is this particular distance that is nothing but x z m p minus x i. Okay. So, x z m p minus x i. So, I am getting the moment due to this particular the vertical force. Now, I am trying to find out the moment due to this horizontal force. Now, horizontal direction the force is m i x i double dot. So, m i x i double dot and your this particular height is nothing but is your z i. So, m i x i double dot multiplied by z i is the moment. Now, here so, this is going to create some sort of clockwise moment, this is also create some sort of clockwise moment, but this is going to create some sort of anti clockwise and that particular torque the summation of torque is nothing but summation i equals to 1 to 7 because I have got 7 links. Okay. So, i i 
multiplied by omega i dot. So, this is nothing but the torque and summation of that and this is anti clockwise and other things are clockwise. So, clockwise I have taken as positive and anti clockwise is negative and that is equals to 0. And if I solve, if I simplify, so I will be getting the expression for the x z m p. So, I will be getting the coordinate of this particular point that is nothing but the 0 moment point. And once you have got this particular 0 moment point, now very easily I can find out what is this your dynamic balance margin that is x z m p. Now, x z m p is nothing but L 7 by 2. Now, L 7 by 2 if I consider, now L 7 by 2 if I consider, so I am here. So, this is nothing but L 7 by 2 minus your x z m p. So, minus this x z m p, then what is the dynamic balance margin? So, dynamic balance margin is this much. So, this is nothing but is your the dynamic balance margin. Now, if I consider x z m p is here, in that case I will have the maximum the dynamic balance margin. Now, this is the way actually we calculate the dynamic balance margin for this particular during the biped walking. Now, in, in short let me discuss, let me tell you the procedure how to find out the joint torque and how to determine the joint torque I have discussed in much more details while discussing the, the dynamics. Now, let me, let me proceed little bit faster. So, this is actually how to, uh, de, how to assign the coordinate system at the different joints according to this d h parameter setting rule. Now, this d h parameter setting rule, so I have discussed in details in the, the in the chapter of robot dynamics and those things I am not going to repeat. Now, using that particular principle of d h parameter setting, so at each of these particular robotic joint 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So, I will have to assign this particular the coordinate system like x axis, y axis and z axis we will have to uh, uh, assign. Now, once you have assigned this particular coordinate system, now if I want to find out the joint torque, so what I will have to do is, so I will have to find out what should be the variation of theta as a function of time and we will have to assume actually the smooth variation of this particular the joint angle. Now, while discussing the trajectory planning, I have discussed in much more details like how to fit. So, this type of fifth order polynomial just to find out a smooth variation of theta. So, here q t is nothing but theta t because this is nothing but your the rotary joint. So, what I will have to do is I will have to find out. So, theta as a function of time some sort of smooth curve I will have to fit and once you have got that particular thing now I am in a position to find out what should be the variation of this particular joint torque that is tau 1 as a function of time, then tau 2 as a function of time and so on up to tau 7. And how to derive? So, those things I have discussed in much more details. So, I am not going to repeat. Now, this is actually the final expression for the torque and this d i k is nothing but the inertia terms which I have already discussed and derived h i k m Coriolis and centrifugal term and C i is nothing but the gravity terms as we have discussed in much more details in robot dynamics. So, I am not going to spend much time on this. So, now I am in a position to think that for this particular biped robot I am able to find out what should be the expression for the joint torque and how to determine actually your the dynamic balance margin. Now, here actually what you can do is, so I can discuss like how to determine this power consumption. Now, the expression for the power consumption, power we know that is nothing but the rate of change of uh, work done or work done per unit time. So, here, so this particular tau i, tau denotes actually the torque multiplied by q i dot that is nothing but the angular velocity. So, torque multiplied by the angular displacement is the work done per unit time. 
So, this is nothing but the, the power plus here I have written k multiplied by tau i square. Now, I have already discussed that at each of the robotic joint we use some DC motor and whenever we are going to use DC motor, motor there will be some loss and that particular loss is nothing but. So, loss in the in this DC motor is proportional to tau square that means, your the loss L is nothing but k multiplied by tau square and k is nothing but is your constant of proportionality. And generally for the DC motor, so this particular k is taken to be equal to 0 0.025 or very close to that. Now, if I know this particular, so I can find out how much is the loss due to this particular uh, loss in this particular the DC motor and this is the requirement of the torque and I can find out what should be the, the uh, power rating for the motor which I am going to put at the, the different joints. And using this particular principle actually we can find out what should be the power rating uh, for this particular your uh, uh, the, 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 the motor connected at the joint. This is how to carry out the analysis for the single support phase. Thank you.